Hey y'all, Cindy Gillen here, six-time figure Olympia champion. And I'm here to talk to y'all about kind of my process in terms of what I do in order to get ready for my food festivals, to get ready for my cheat meals, and to just kind of find the best ways to still have fun, but still always be conscious of what goals I'm trying to create. And if I'm trying to be the best, you don't really have a chance to really take a break from that. You can find nuances where you're getting a little bit more freedom in there. But at the end of the day, you kind of have to love the process from start to finish and kind of everything about the process. And if you want to be the best, you have to do what others will not do. So what is a food festival? So I came up with food festivals about maybe had to be four or five years ago. So usually back in the past, I would get off stage and I would have the weekend to myself to have a cheat meal. I would cheat the whole weekend and then would get back on my plan um, the following week or before I even really got into the whole concept of having more discipline and being a year-round athlete, I would take the entire week off of dieting and training that week after a show. And I kind of saw what that did for me. That was the first year I was with my coach. Once I won my first Olympia title, I had to kind of have a recognition of the fact that if you want to retain this and you want to be better the next year, you have to start doing things that you aren't necessarily doing right now. And for me, I knew the post-show aspect was the main thing that I could improve on. So what I decided to do was kind of postpone the enjoyment a little bit more. And so I will have my cheat meal the day of the show. After the day of the show, that Saturday, I am on my plan all the way through the entire week and then we go into the next week. So usually what I'll do is I'll try to make it like a trip or somewhere where I'm going somewhere or doing something and kind of going about it that way. So during this process, I was deciding that, hey, you don't need the food right now. Let's see what, it will, what will happen if you kind of just wait a little bit, let the body settle down, let all your hormones kind of just chill out and then you implement the food and implement more of a cheat meal and get that freedom that way. So you have a little bit of a diet break but you have the time to let your body settle before you start incorporating all those extra foods. So that's when the food festival was created. Food festival means for a certain period of time, whether that's four days or five days, I eat whatever I want, as much as I want, all day long, from 12 o'clock the start of the first day to 12 o'clock the end of the next day. That is a food festival. That's four to five days. Now, the difference between a food festival and a cheat meal, the cheat meal is one meal on that cheat day. One meal versus day's worth. So that's the key differential between my cheat meals and my food festivals. Now, cheat meals, general process is I drink my two gallons a day. I eat all my meals except my last meal. I uh, replace my last meal with whatever the cheat meal will be. And when I start the cheat meal, the second I start eating, I keep going, keep going, keep going until I'm full. So there's no really a measurement of how much I need to be eating or I'm told to eat. I eat as much as I want and I stop. But the second I stop eating, the cheat meal is done and then we move on. Now for the food festival, I want to kind of see a new way to get better and find a new level of discipline. And I wanted to see if I could manage to have an even better improvement season. And that all starts the days where your show is just ending. These first couple of days after a show are super, super crucial. And I mean, you can kind of have little flubs here and there. For me, I'm a believer of progress is great, but perfect progress and perfect practice leads to better progress. So more so of a try to be as perfect as you can. That's my kind of thing. I don't like to kind of deviate and I have allowances for like, oh, maybe I could do. No, I, I set a plan. I sit to the plan. I complete the plan. I repeat the plan. Or I repeat the plan and take the pieces that are better and add on things that I think will be better. So that's what the goal of this food festival is. I'll be going to St. Lucia. Food is really, really clean when you're going out of the country anyway to like certain locations. So that helps in itself. But I wanted to kind of just see the different ways that are going to allow me to be my best, retain the least amount of water as possible because that's the main thing I look, I, I look for. I'm not going to gain body fat in five days. Um, for me, when I get back from my food festivals, I'm generally the same weight that I was the week prior 
is the week as the, um, after I get back from a food festival. So it pretty much levels out. So I have those days to kind of calm down after I get off the food festival, get off the plane, stop traveling, whatever it may be. I have those days to let the inflation inflammation kind of just settle down. And then we go back into the plan and then we start really reversing from there and building the food back up. But in terms of this food festival, I have a couple key things that I'm, I'm going to switch up. One of the first things I'm going to start with is my water intake. Now, with the amount of food that I can personally eat, I don't necessarily want to put two gallons of water behind it. I drink two gallons of water a day every single day for probably the last four or five years. So generally, I kind of think of the process of, of when you're carving up for a show. Generally, a lot of coaches will start raising the carbs of an athlete and start pulling the water down a little bit because they're going to go together and then where that that those carbs go, the water goes. So I'm kind of going to cut that down. So I'm going to cut it in half, actually. But while I'm cutting it in half, I'm going to make sure that I'm implementing these next couple of supplements that is going to still focus on my hydration and still focus on my recovery so that I'm bouncing back better than the years prior. So a large part of just my entire protocol is really focusing on just that hydration, that hydration and the recovery. The food festival is, yes, it's a mental break. It's a diet break. But at the, at the end of the day, it's the, the four to five days where I'm able to really pour food into the body and let that food go to the muscles that I'm able to recover so that my joints feel lubricated, my muscles feel balancy and they feel full. I'm really just kind of filling up the tank in order to carry me through the rest of the year, especially since I only have a food festival dependent on the shows that I'm doing. Food festivals only go after a show. So if I don't compete, I don't eat. An even larger portion of cutting my water in half is so that I have that bounce back. So if I cut my water in half, that's technically going to dehydrate me more than my usual two gallons. But with that, when I come back home and I'm getting settled down and all the information is settling down, at that point, I go back to my two gallons. So I cut it down, but I go back to my baseline and that baseline of a whole extra gallon will flush out a lot of the food that I ate over here. So that's kind of the thought process behind cutting the water down, and then I'm gonna spike it back up once my food goes back to level instead of eating however many carbs and calories I plan on eating when I'm in um, vacation. So for me, water retention is, um, I have key signals that I watch for to tell me if I'm going too far left or if I'm in a good place. So for me, my water retention starts in my toes and my ankles. Once it goes from the toes and my ankles like a little bit of edema, you can see kind of like if you press it, you'll see a little bit of water come there. Then it will travel up, it'll skip legs, it'll go to my abs first, uh, second. So you're gonna get a little pushy in the abs. If I keep going, it will then go to my legs. So you kind of want to see how your water distributes it on your body so that you're able to watch, like say, hey, Maybe I need to pull back over here or maybe I need to go drink a little bit more water because I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. If that water retention is not uncomfortable, you're, you should still be in a good, uh, good spot. It's just person dependent on how you want to feel throughout that day, those days and kind of where you are mentally in terms of what you want to kind of create in the future. So for me, if my main focus is getting better in the future, I want to give my body less days to have to recover so that way we're already progressing and going into the next prep, which is about 11 months out once January hits. So I'm kind of always thinking of that process of yes, have fun, but also kind of toe that line to see where you're at mentally and if new levels of discipline still bring you the same happiness, I'll tend to do that new level of discipline if I'm still going to be just as good as I was before I was that disciplined. And I think it's also important to note that, yes, a lot of people can have water retention. Everybody can have water retention. If you sit too long, you're, you can have water in your ankles, whatever it may be. I think it's important to note that it will go away once you get back to your plan. And if you keep that in mind and are still able to have fun, you'll be in a good spot. You don't want to... Say, hey, oh, I see a little bit of water. Let me pull back right away. It's okay. If you're eating something that you have not been eating for months or a year or something like that, it's okay. It'll bounce back in a few days. Just let everything mellow out and kind of just stay focused on still being present, having fun, and doing what you want to do. So 
Food festivals don't mean I'm going to go eat pizza and a whole bunch of dairy all day. Food festivals will be me eating sandwiches that I don't usually eat, eating sauces that I don't usually eat, eating a salad that has cherries and berries and all these different type of protein and salad dressings that I don't eat. So it's really about eating things that I just want to eat. It's about that freedom of saying, hey, I want to eat this bag of chips. I'm going to eat it. If there are pea chips, I'm going to eat it. If I want to eat this sandwich, I'm going to eat it. If I want to eat this cookie, I'm going to eat it. So it's just about having that freedom of choice. Because when you're in prep and when I'm not in a food festival, there is no freedom of choice. If it's not written out on the plan, I'm not eating it. So that leads us to what's going to help me get the best bang for my buck and allow me to enjoy my experience and have the most amazing prep once January hits. So the first product I'm going to start with is my Evolog, which is a glucose dis disposal agent. And that main priority is to keep my blood sugar from spiking. So it's going to go, it's going to send the food to my muscles versus to my bloodstream and to my fat. Okay. So that's super important because if I'm eating 10 different pancakes, hash browns, muffins, and all these carbs, which I usually eat my breakfast meals, is usually my heaviest, my biggest meals. I want something that's going to help me not spike my blood sugar up, go straight to the muscle and allow me to really recover more. And within the same Evolog, it also has enzymes that are allowing me to help break that food down while the carbs are being shuttled to my muscles. So that's really important part and that's going to keep everything a little bit more mellow. So in the past, when I have not taken Evolog, I can literally feel my heartbeat just start racing and racing and racing. And so that's the main thing I noticed once I started taking Evogen's Evolog, it allowed me to kind of just let everything settle and I was able to bounce back faster after cheat meals because everything was going to where I need to go to and it was also allowing my muscles to recover and relax and get the nutrients that it wants to receive when it's really been put through the ringer. Next product I'll really, really be focusing on are my main basics, which is my probiotic and my Evil Vite. Evil Vite is a multivitamin. So I'm gonna take the powder for more version, which I've been taking the last couple uh, months. It's really, really delicious. It's like a little orange juice, and that's just for overall health and well being. I think a lot of people go on these cheat meals and they go on these food festivals and different things, and they forget that at the end of the day, health is wealth and you still want to make sure you're taking care of your immune system while you're still pouring all this food into it. So with the Evil Vite, the main focus of that is still electrolytes. It has everything in it that I need to make sure that my immune system is firing, especially in this cold and flu season where everybody's getting sick left and right. My Evil Vite has really, really spared me in terms of being able to bounce back, keep moving and keep doing what I need to do and keep eating my now, with the probiotic, I take that year-round. That's just not for food festivals and cheat meals or anything like that. That's year-round. And you take one pill a day. And what the goal is, is to increase the gut flora within your, your gastrointestinal system. So the key thing is a lot of people aren't digesting their food. They're constantly inflamed, whether it's from the food that they're eating in their, in their diet plans or the dehydration that they have. So the probiotic is going to allow me to have my intestinal tract able, willing, and ready to digest the food that I'm going in. And then I pack that evil log on top of that, which also has a probiotic in it too, to just constantly keep breaking down that food. The key thing is you don't want to just eat food and it just passes through. You want that food to kind of get in the system, nourish the system, and allow you to actually soak up the benefits of the food that you're eating. So one of the newest supplements that I haven't started taking yet, and it's going to be my first time trying it, so I'm really excited to see how my system works with it, is the Evo Greens. It's basically your, it's six servings of fruits and veggies. So what I find that I do when I'm going on a food festival, majority of the time I'm not gonna prioritize having fruit unless it's in some ice cream or in like a smoothie or something like that. And I'm not gonna prioritize veggies either because that's taking up space I could have had for my burgers and my french fries or my ice cream and my cake. So why am I gonna eat my veggies if I can't eat this over here? Still get some sort of nutrients, but it's a little bit just different. It's more something that I'm not eating every day. So 
killing two birds with one stone. In my evergreens, I'm still getting my fruits and my veggies every day, six servings worth, which is what I already eat on the regular. And everybody knows that when you're dehydrated, the doctors always say, drink your, um, eat your veggies, eat your fruits, and that helps detoxify the system. So that's my thought process in terms of including the evil greens in every single day. I probably do it on an empty stomach so that I'm getting all those nutrients in out the gate so that way I can focus on all the more stereotypically fun foods throughout the rest of the day. Within that same product is spirulina, which is a superfood, which also helps detoxify the body. So if I'm adding in different ingredients I haven't eaten, those are definitely toxins. And so if I can take a supplement that's going to help me get rid of those toxins at the same time, it's kind of like goes in, goes straight back out. That's kind of the thing you want to kind of go for. And that's what I'm thinking of in terms of why I put that in the plan. I think that's going to be one of the main things besides the evil log that's really, really going to change just the outcome of just my bounce back. The next two supplements that I'm definitely going to keep in are my Amino Cam and my Amino Jack. I take both of these supplements every single day and both for two different reasons. So technically, the Amino Cam is an intro workout. It has um, nitric oxide in it, which allows the oxygen and the blood flow to go um, throughout your body more efficiently. It allows you to recover. It's good for muscle growth and protein synthesis. But for me, for this sole purpose for the food festival, it's going to be the hydration and recovery aspect. So I'm really, really focused, like I said, on hydration. The more I can get in within that one gallon, because I have my base gallon, but I'm taking all these supplements to increase that and get my body closer to what I normally drink without the actual intake of it in terms of the food. That's the thought process with that. So within that same amino cam, it's increasing blood flow. And so... Increased blood flow means increased circulation, and that means everything is flowing how I need it to flow. And once it goes in, it's going out, we're moving around, everything is, is really digesting and moving really, really well. Blood flow aspect was going to be very, very crucial, especially because I don't plan on necessarily working out, like in the stereotypical version of it, like going to lift weights. I'll do the water sports and move that way, or I won't. It's an option of kind of just going where and doing what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. So that's going to be the purpose of the amino chem. So recovery and making sure that I'm really utilizing these foods, sitting down for a second, letting my body relax. But while it's relaxing, it's getting those EAAs and those BCAAs pushing into the muscle, pushing throughout the body so that I'm really recovered and ready for these next 11 months. And the same thing goes with my amino jet. That's going to be just your plant-based BCAAs. Same thing, same process of still putting in the amino acids so that I'm able to really, really recover, but also having even more electrolytes. So the whole process of having my fruits, having my veggies, having my extra electrolytes, having my EAAs, my BCAAs, my glucose disposal agents, all of these things are what I think is going to help me be the best me coming out of this. We're going for title number seven. And at this point, it's a nitpicky game of really finding anything that can be better. And I think what people have to realize, once you get to a certain point, details are everything. And this is the main thing. I do everything I need to do year round, but this is the main thing that has deviations and trial and error while I'm trying different things to see how my body reacts. And I think that's really, really important for people to just realize that, hey, nobody's perfect. You can always be better. And that's how I look at everything that I do in my life, that everything can always be better. And if there's a way for, to do that, I'm going to find it out. So... Ultimately, this is my whole plan of what I think is going to bring the best me. It's going to be these supplements and just really relaxing and resting my body, having time in the sun and everything like that. And another key tip is if you're going to a place that has salt water and you do find that you're getting a little bit more water retention than you need to, go sit in the water. It's like one big Epsom salt bath. And I accidentally found that out when I fell into the water <laughs> two years ago on my honeymoon. I was like, oh, look all these veins in my leg. But that's because it was salt water and it's a whole bunch of it and everything just got pulled out. So I hope this kind of process, kind of just how I thought through everything makes sense. It may not, it may, but this is kind of what I'm testing out this year to see 
what it does. So before I even thought through the whole plan, I had my check-ins with my coach. I knew what I weighed in on this past Friday. I knew what I weighed in on this past Sunday. So that way I know when I come back and I check in with him, if it actually worked, I'll know during the process whether I'm swelling or not or whether I'm looking down at my ankles, looking at my little big toes and seeing if they still little big toes instead of big, big toes. So kind of watching that. So hope this helps. Anyway, I'll be doing more of these videos. I will also be filming a Q&A once I get back from vacation in next week. So I'll post that on my Instagram stories. Be sure to check those out. And we're going to start shooting more content here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and get your e supplements.